Welcome to the On-Premise IT Roundtable Podcast, the only show that dares to be both on-premise and on-premises. Each time we meet, we bring together some IT luminaries to discuss a single concept or premise. In this episode, we're going to be discussing cloud architectures and cloud components. The question is, do you care where your SaaS application resides? I do. But before we begin, let's meet our contestants. I'm Martez Reed. You can find me at Green Reed Tech. I'm Justin Warren. You can find me on Twitter as at JP Warren. I'm Ned Belvance. You can find me on Twitter at Ned1313. Uh, and I'm Chris Porter, and you can find me at Upright Vinyl. So today's premise is all about IT infrastructure. And the question is, do you care where your SaaS application resides? Do you care what uh, application it is, what hardware it's running on, what service provider it's running on? And frankly, I think you should, because there's a time when uh, that knowledge might help you or might help you make a better decision. Isn't that right, Martez? That's absolutely correct. I mean, when you start looking at the availability of the service that you're leveraging, I mean, there's some inherent importance there. Even if you're provided with an SLA, if there's an outage in your service provider, uh, even though you're sort of guaranteed credits back or something like that, there's still an outage to your primary business. And having that knowledge, knowing where it's running and knowing what's underneath it might uh, help you make that decision, either decide not to use that application or decide to use it in a different way, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that absolutely influences sort of the decision you make to if you're trusting of that provider in terms of their ability to deliver a highly available solution, it, it really matters. Yeah, I mean, there's some, I, I live in Australia, which is a long way away from everywhere else. So if my SaaS application lives in a data center that is on the other side of the planet, the speed of light doesn't change. So I do actually care about it being hosted somewhat close to me if latency is important to me, for example. So we got some cloudier guys here at the table with us too. Uh, do you guys care where it's running? Mostly no. I think uh, you have to do a certain amount of due diligence when you're checking out the product to make sure that they have SLAs and guarantees around it. But if it's really just hinging on another product that also has SLAs and guarantees, then it's only as good as those contracts are. Um, there are some proximity issues, but that's more about inspecting the service and not necessarily the underlying architecture that makes it up. Yeah, I think, uh, I think from my perspective, you shouldn't really care. And it, it, partly it depends on the service it's providing. So if it's something that does need that locality, like uh, backups or something that might be somewhat high throughput, then you're going to care kind of the locations and make sure it's close. But if it's something more um, that can be provided through, through CDNs, it can be provided globally, um, you don't care. And one of the questions here, I think, as well, is, is really interesting, is if you've done all that due diligence and you've accepted that SaaS service based on the provider they're using, and then that SaaS service decides we're going to ch change provider. Does that break the SaaS model? Because then they need to go to every one of their customers and go, you need, now need to re-sign this contract because you you signed the contract saying we'd be on that provider. And it kind of breaks that agility of a SaaS provider to be able to change their, their, their cost model underneath. I, um, I agree that it sh you shouldn't need to care, mostly, apart from you know physics um, existing as, as a thing. But... You do. Practically, you do actually have to care because of issues around design, the fact that people haven't actually built a data center in certain locations, or they have built a data in certain locations and not others, such as regulations like GDPR, or Facebook has access to all of my data and I don't want them to, so I'm going to put it somewhere else. Or you have the issue of Microsoft versus the United States. If my email happens to be on a service that is owned by an American company, congratulations, the NSA can now read all of my email. Well, yeah, that's, actually a, that's a real good point right there because um, I think even the most ardent cloud supporter would support uh, the idea, not necessarily of what particular provider it is, but what uh, geo or uh, political location it is. Mm. Yeah, Wait, I, so the I, I, petitioning I, is important, but it's so it's not only physical location, it can also be logical location, such yeah. as is this within the realms of something which a particular government can come and grab? So do you care that the Chinese government has access to all of your iCloud keys now if you live in China? So, uh, or, or even if you happen to be sort of living your past If you happen to be <laughs> somewhere which is apparently part of China, even though the rest of the world may not necessarily agree with that, <clears throat> Taiwan. So you have to do uh, your due diligence on those pieces. And I guess the question is how what level do you care? So uh, the kind of the premise of this discussion is do you care 
uh, the hardware that they're running in that data center that that SaaS location is running on. Um, I, I probably think we can all agree we don't care. Well, let's, let's take that one. Do you care about the hardware that it's running on? I don't think I would say all the way down to the minute hardware level, but I, I think definitely in terms of the architecture, I think it's very important in terms of, I mean, even though we've mentioned SLAs, it kind of becomes one of those things of what's your sort of return if the SLA is broken? Is it the customer experience is, is gotten back? Because at the end of the day, if you have an outage and your customer can't get to whatever service you're providing, can you just go to them and say, hey, our SaaS provider had an outage, sorry. Can you, down, can you still trust us? Down to that hardware level and you're talking about the architecture, do you care whether they're using iSCSI or NFS? Well, I care if they're using something that's subject to Spectre and it hasn't been patched yet. Do you? If it hasn't been patched yet, yes, because someone else who's also running on the same provider has access to all of my private keys. Well, you would say well, I mean, in a, if they're at that level. I was going to say in a SaaS situation, they shouldn't because you need a certain level of access down to the process level to be able to extract secrets from one running process to another. That, but the whole idea of SaaS is, is you are abstracted at a level that you're never getting direct access to the operating system we're of whatever's running. Yeah, we're talking about SaaS, yeah. not IaaS or PaaS uh -huh. or anything like that. We're talking pure SaaS. Uh -huh. Why did you buy SaaS in the first place? Well, I said cloud, so you didn't. you okay. said SaaS. Okay. Well, that's... <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah. Uh, this, so now okay. we, so we when find we started the cloud. The, uh, yeah. Oh, yay! <laughs> when we started the conversation prior to the podcast, I, I was speaking entirely about SaaS. Not, yeah. I, I might care a lot more about what's running if it's IaaS, because then I do have operating system level access. And if I can break out into the hypervisor and get into your virtual machine, then that's a real problem. But if, it's, but if I'm just consuming a service uh. and it's software as a service, and I don't have that lower, la uh, lower level of access, then maybe I don't care as much about the hardware or at all. So it's, I guess it's more, why did you choose SaaS in the first place? It was probably because you wanted to reduce the administrative burden of managing all the components that would make up that software stack. You just want to consume it like a utility. So is it important in that case to understand all the minutia of the underlying architecture? And that gets to a question, I think, of trust and of buy-in, right? I mean, it depends on the extent to which you're buying into the cloud as a solution versus uh, as a location or as hardware or infrastructure. I guess, I guess it is kind of an IaaS versus SaaS question. If mm -hmm. I'm buying solution as a service, mm -hmm. as distinct from software as a service, then no, I probably, I, I can care less at a higher level of abstraction if the service has been well designed. To some, you know, depending on what well designed means. <laughs> yeah, and again, do you? Uh, how deep do you dig into that well design? Because I would, I would argue that for some of this, you you, you take an SLA and you go. Because take the the big, um, of some of the obvious examples of SaaS, Office 365, for example. Mm. How how deep am I digging into that service to understand how it's designed under the bonnet? I mean, you, it really, it, a lot of it is cloak and dagger. So I'm taking an SLA that says it's going to be available. It's going to be they're going to keep my data durable. Um, it and, depends. And I on, accept that. No, so it'll depend on how important it is to my business. So and I, one of my favorite questions around SLAs is if you break your if you breach SLA, what do I win? Because if I need to make sure that like because if it's really important to my business and you're down for a week and I go bankrupt because I can't access my service, then I can't afford to spend on lawyers for six months to try mm -hmm. to get you to provide me with credits that I now can't use. Right, which I think that leads into the due diligence part of it is assume that SLAs will be broken at some point and what's the financial impact to you? And the risk assessment of going on board. Right, yeah. and if yeah. that's the case, then you need to design, design whatever your offering is to the end user to be resilient against failure of a particular service you're consuming. So if you're using IaaS in Azure, you also want to use IaaS in AWS and have your application somehow load balance between those two so that either one of them can break their SLA and you're still up and running. Or maybe have some stuff that's on site. No, that's ridiculous. No one does that. <laughs> I think the, the other challenge is from a security standpoint of trying to peek underneath the covers of, are they encrypting passwords as they should in databases and different things like that? Because I mean, uh, time and time again, we've seen 
where that inherent level of trust is placed in a SaaS provider and it comes up short. Yes, and they horribly violate it. <laughs> oh no, who could that possibly be? <laughs> We're not it naming could, names. It could be anyone, it could be everyone. And that's, I guess, another question. You know, do you trust, uh, again, it, 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 it's how much do you trust in the provider? How much do you trust that they're uh, gonna live up to their promises? And how much do you trust that their architecture is right in the first place? Because that's, that's the other thing. I mean, if they can't um, you know, live up to their security uh, promises, are they really living up to their architecture promises? I mean, if they won't tell you how many replicas of their data they're storing and things like that, uh, are so they think, really going uh, to live it up? I think some of this comes down to actually meeting certain um compliance and certification so you can actually do that comparison and not keep asking the same questions all mm. these providers so mm -hmm. if you look at uh, yeah. ISO 20001 you know SOC I mean uh, if you look at Amazon they, they have that where you can go online and uh, it's, it's an artifact or you can and you can pull all those details yeah. right and oftentimes people will want to go and assess these providers and they go just look we've been assessed lots of times by probably more constant competent auditors right we're sending Maybe. they'll give you the attestations yeah. of yeah. those certificates now the, do you trust that the deeper question oh, yeah. is are any of those certifications any good yeah and because some and it's varying degrees right if yeah. if you're pci dss certified i really want to know what you're doing because i don't trust that certification at all well hmm. s p and moody's and everyone said it was triple a so it's <laughs> it must be good <laughs> well that's the other thing is that a lot of these companies aren't claiming certifications you know tm they're claiming, oh, well, the government trusts us, or this government agency trusts us, or this big company trusts us. Mm. I mean, you know, you know of this giant company, they use us, so you should too. That's certainly not a certification. No. no. Would you buy that? Well, I know big companies always make good decisions, so <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> Seriously, though, I mean, that's not... That's not a good argument, obviously, for, for consuming a particular service. It's, it's no. an argument, though. It yes. is the, the idea of social proof. You know, 100 million customers can't be wrong. Well, yes, they absolutely can, but what, what is the likelihood that all 100,000 of them are all wrong simultaneously? So that mm -hmm. it is yeah. trying to use a, a proxy for due diligence when a company is not actually saying, yes, you can completely come in and see exactly how we've done everything because it's secret source. So that, and it, otherwise we have to have total transparency from these organisations, which then means that they can't have competitive advantages within some of the special ways that they do stuff. Mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of an inherent tension, I think. I don't think you're convincing us. Are they convincing you, Martez? Not really convincing me because even you go to the whole certification thing. I mean, technically those are just point in time snapshots of their environment. And I, I've seen some places where, yeah, we, we got compliant for the audit and <laughs> Things slipped back after the audit, and we're waiting for that next audit the, the next year or whatever it may be. Everyone runs around cleaning everything just before your mother in law visits. With the yeah. white glove. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, have we convinced you guys that you should care? No. No. I think <laughs> you have to care down to a certain level. So, of you the do care. Yes, we win. You have to care about things, yes, broadly <laughs> speaking. But, uh, <laughs> but there's a certain level at which. Um, they're not going to show you what they're doing, and honestly, if you care that deeply about it, run it yourself. Yeah. I think you, you shouldn't just you shouldn't just blindly accept it and, and, and use these services, especially like SaaS services we're talking about, but yeah. there's due diligence and there's that risk um, decision to make about your, your SLAs and, and then downtime and accepting that, going in with an open face, uh, open, uh, open mind. Um, but... I don't, I'm just going to, if I accept that SLA and, I, and those certifications, those pieces, I, I'm not going to get much more detail out of these guys because they, and, and your option is just to go and run it yourself and, and, and deal with running it on-prem and all the, all the caveats and everything that come with that. And that's an option that's perfectly valid. But um, I think the, the adoption is showing that people, whether they go in or not, uh, with, with having done the due diligence, uh, people are going in, in, in large measures. Uh, so I should care, but also not. Yeah, we've got to sleep. Okay. Well, it's not a binary thing. You should care up to a certain watermark. And then if you really care beyond that watermark, maybe the cloud's not the right fit for you. Yeah. I know that it, might exactly. be heresy right now. but <laughs> And I think that's where I'm going to leave this. So I think, uh, I think I'm going to say that um, you should care if you're a nerd. And if you care and you're a nerd, then the cloud is really no place for you. So therefore... Nerds, unplug.
Thanks for listening to the On-Premise IT Roundtable podcast. If you enjoyed this discussion, remember to subscribe, rate, and review the show on iTunes since that really helps our visibility. And share the show with your friends. This podcast was brought to you by GestaltIT.com, your home for IT coverage across the enterprise. For show notes and more episodes, go to GestaltIT.com slash podcast. And thanks for listening.